So hello, welcome to my new house. I've been here about two months and I'm enjoying it much better than the old one. Mainly due to the lack of mould and a really nice landlord, which always helps. I've now got two rooms. I've got a bedroom and then this is my office. Or as I like to call it, the man cave. I've got like all my musical instruments and my computer and things. It's just amazing. So a few weeks ago I got the chance to visit Airbus Defence and Space. If you've never heard of them, they're part of the same group that makes Airbus planes that you probably been on holiday on. Airbus Defence and Space make much cooler things though, like space launchers, such as the Ariane 5. They also make space probes like Rosetta, which deployed a lander onto a comet last year. They make satellites and they've also made parts for the International Space Station, like the Columbus module. So I went to Airbus to the space as a sort of open day for students, so it felt a bit like an interview, which was kind of weird. They gave a guided tour of the facility, which was really cool, and unfortunately you couldn't take photos for most of it, but there was lots of really cool stuff there. They had these massive rooms for assembling entire spacecraft, so you could go and see all the ones that were halfway to being built. They had these big winding machines for making fuel tanks out of composites, which were really light and really stiff, so they were cool. They had huge lumps of artificially grown quartz like the size of my head, and they use that for making accurate clocks in spacecraft. But they grow it all of the facility, and apparently it's really, really pure, so it's worth quite a lot. They had these weirdly shaped antenna dishes, which instead of being flat or parabolic, they were like lumpy shaped. And those are really cool, because instead of having a round beam aimed at the Earth, you can make one of any shape you like, like a country or a continent, which means you don't need as much power to reach everyone you need to reach, and it's a lot cheaper. What I really liked about the facility was the way that everything was really open plan and the way that all the designers and the manufacturers are all in the same building. So if you were designing something, you'd go down to the workshop and see it being put together and come to life. And I think that'd be really cool if you're working there. So one of the spacecraft at the facility is called Aeolius and it's been in the news lately. It's going to measure wind speeds in the atmosphere by using a UV laser and this is going to track the movement of particles in the air and find out how fast the wind's going. And they're finally starting to assemble it but it was started back in 2003. The problem was with this laser, they designed it and built it and then they discovered that it couldn't work in a vacuum. So that was pretty useless. So now it's been delayed for over a decade, which is not ideal. So after the tour we got to go and have a look at the Mars Yard, and I finally got to use my camera because they use it for publicity stuff. So the Mars Yard is an artificial environment for testing Mars rovers, and that's primarily for the ExoMars mission. ExoMars is a two-part mission, the first half gets to Mars in October, that consists of an orbiter called the Trace Gas Orbiter, and there's a small lander called Schiaparelli, probably pronounced that badly. And then the second part is a rover that's going to land in 2020. So the Mars Yard is designed to be as representative as possible of the Martian environment. The wall is this massive panorama that was taken by the Curiosity rover. For the floor they analysed Martian dust samples and they got a geologist to find the closest match on Earth. Even the lighting is designed to be like the Martian sky, and it also makes a really annoying loud noise when you turn it on. So there are currently three rovers in the Mars Yard. They've got great names, they're called Bridget, Brian and Bruno. I don't know why they all start with BR. Bridget was recently controlled remotely from the International Space Station by Tim Peake. This was a test for times when human intervention might be required. They tested the rover in a cave scenario where there's no light and the rovers are solar powered, so obviously if it got stuck in the cave, the mission would be lost. There is a problem with this though, in that the maximum separation of Earth and Mars is 360 million kilometers, which is about 20 light minutes. So if you're trying to control a rover remotely, then you have a delay of 40 minutes between the time you send a command and the time you see what happened. One concept they have is of sending a human to Mars but not to land, just to orbit. And then they'll land a rover, then the rover will be controlled remotely from Mars orbit. And this is much easier than landing people on Mars, and it also means the rover is much quicker to control, so it can do more work in less time. So Bruno is the newest of the three rovers, and it's being used to test the guidance, navigation and control system. This controls the rover autonomously, so it doesn't have to be directly controlled from Earth. And that saves a lot of time compared to beaming signals across the solar system. The special tiles on the ceiling are basically like circular barcodes, and there's a camera on Bruno that points straight up, and it uses that to work out where it is in the room. And so that system is used to check the GNC system. So to be an accurate representation of the actual rover, Bruno is designed to be a weight representative model. Now Martian gravity is almost three times weaker than Earth's gravity, so Bruno's mass has to be a lot lower, which is why you see all these massive holes and really thin structures. And they made it really tall to make the center of gravity accurate, so the wheels are relatively heavy compared to the rest of it, so they had to make the rest of it light to offset the wheels. The wheels themselves are actually quite impressive. Um, 
So the, the locomotion system in and of itself is extremely capable, so much so that it's not the limiting factor. We're, we're more concerned about you know, striking other parts of the, of the rover. Uh, I believe someone took Bridget to an event and uh, there was a malfunction with the control system they were using and Bridget just kept going towards the wall. Not very fast, again, it's moving like you know, this fast, <laughs> something approximately like that. But it hit the wall, it just started to <laughs> crab its way up it because again, it's, it's so talky and uh, they will actually just damage themselves. So. so they seem like a really cool company to work for and it was a really fun day out. So if you get the chance, I say go for it, it was really interesting. So I hope you found that interesting. Feel free to leave any comments below and subscribe to us for more videos. I'll see you next time.